Okay, the last um, class. So it's hard for me to think back because because we did have that one class canceled because of the weather. But the last last class we were here, we talked uh, a little bit. The idea was about one thing that we want to do is we want to make truly good mobile experiences. In other words, our our mobile websites. We want to go beyond merely taking. A, a website and shrinking it down so it works on a, on a smaller screen. And we can do better than that. And we can do better than that by exploiting, taking advantage of the characteristics of a mobile device. And we talked a little bit about that and some of the characteristics, again, which are, which are a, a bigger factor in mobile device, is the, that it can be sensitive to the context, all right? Much more location aware than uh, a desktop uh, can be. Um, we talked about being able to capture media, being able to take photos and so on, and we talked about uh, the social aspect of it. The one that we're focusing now on is the context, uh, being sensitive to the context, and sometimes they use the word location aware. And we talked last time about using the geolocation built-in HTML5 standard to find out where we were and to display some information. And the one observation that we have that I want to I want to go back to is that when we visited a site in a desktop browser versus on a mobile browser, the mobile browser gave us a much finer pinpointing of exactly where we are we were. And that's that's important. That's an important concept to realize. Um, okay, let's continue onward and upward. And we'll look at some of the things that I wanted to do last time that we'll do this time instead. First thing I want to do is I want to show you in detail. We may have looked at this example, but I don't think we looked at the code if we did. I want to show you the uh, ability to show weather. And there's a couple good examples on this uh, that, that I found on the web. The one that I picked, I think, is the one that uses jQuery as distinct from jQuery mobile um, to uh, provide a, a nifty little look to it. So let's bring that up. All right. This is actually using Yahoo's API to build a simple weather app. Using geolocation. What does API stand for? Anyone aware of that? Does API stand for? Something something interface. <laughs> something something interface. Very good. Advanced protocol interface. I I, I think advanced programming interface. But let's Google it to find out for no, sure. American Application <laughs> programming <laughs> interface. All right. Um. What does that mean, though? It's more important to know what it means than to know what the letters stand for. One thing that um, one thing that is true about today's software is that people that develop software and people that develop websites can use components that other people have created and incorporate them into your website. That way, the programmer doesn't have to reinvent the wheel each time. The programmer, the developer, doesn't have to go and write code that does something. And we've sort of seen an example of that on a very large scale, the jQuery mobile. We're using stuff that someone already wrote, and that gives us a good jump start into doing what we need to do. So we can focus really on our functionality as opposed to spending a lot of time getting things looking pretty and so on. We can, we can go and do that. Um, what the API is, is it's the way that we can communicate with these other processes. So we're going to use Yahoo's weather service, and to do that, we have to follow their protocol. Remember, we have to know, all right, how to ask for the information that, that it needs, or, or that we want. So we have to supply the information in a form that it's expecting, and then we'll get the information back. So that's what the API means. And here's an example of this, all right. I'm going to click demo at first, then we'll download the code and actually look at it. There's a demo. Brings this up. 
And this browser does not support geolocation because I'm an, an IE. Should have known that, eh? We'll go and we'll open this up in Firefox and we'll get better results. And I open up an IE again. What am I doing? Oh, there we go. I clicked on the wrong window. All right, take three. All right, first of all, notice that it asks us this. One of the functions of a browser um, is, you know, is considered to be sort of the responsibility of the browser to protect us to some degree. That's why some, you know, will ask us if we want to download something. We can set to prevent pop-ups in the browser. We can uh, do all kinds of things in the browser to enhance our protection. So one thing right off the bat is, in case there's privacy issues, is asking us so that we can't come back later and say, hey, you know, the browser told us where, told folks where I was, and, and you know, I'm in the witness protecting protection program, and I didn't want that information divulged. But Again, because this is going through the browser, that's important to realize. Later on when we look at it, for example, when we did a Google search, we never gave permission for Google to know where we were, and yet it knew where we were. All right, so we'll talk about that in a minute here. Here, because this is doing it client side, the browser is protecting us and is asking, do we want to share location? So I will say yes, and then what we get is this. All right, O'Leary, Ohio, it is for centigrade, centigrade, which I don't know what that means, but it's for, all right. Isn't that Celsius? Yeah, centigrade Celsius is the same oh. thing. Um, so actually that is, that's like uh, low 40s, all right. Tomorrow, clear, low of minus 2 Celsius, that would be below 32 and high of that, but partly sunny, and then sunny and that. So we can see our temperature. And we might, and, and scroll back and forth. So this is a nice little thing, and the action for this is happening on the server side. I'm sorry, my mistake, the client side, kind of. It's happening both on the client and the server side. The client is asking for it, the server's delivering it. Let's look at the code in more detail, and, and we'll see what's going on here. Let's go and download this code. Again, browser protecting us, another case of this. We open up the zip file. You know, that is, you know, that is how some viruses spread when people exploit weaknesses in browsers and vulnerabilities in browsers. All right. So I'm going to go and I'll open this up, the local version of it, in IE again. I'll tell you, she just uninstall IE. Good luck with that. Share location. And it knows that we are, or if not, we will soon find out that we are in Elyria. All right, let's look at the code that does this. I'm going to open this. Actually, I'm going to open in Notepad. So let's take a look. All right. They have a couple style sheets here. All right. One that they created, one that is uh, some fonts from Google. They have the IE shiv that we talked about in this class. Um, this is to style the, the HTML5 elements, because remember, um, IE by default doesn't, IE8 and earlier doesn't know about HTML5 header and article and those kinds of tags. So therefore, we have to put that in there. It's not going to help us with the geolocation, right? The this, this shiv isn't going to be able to implement that, but at least the styling of the page, when it tells us 
it can't do it will look nice. So it can't give you the functionality, but it can can give you a pretty message saying that it can't do anything about it. All right. So we have now a div called weather, a div called clouds, some links, some jQuery code, all right, that we have in here. One of them is our code. One of them is the code um, that, that's part of jQuery. Let's look at our JavaScript. Because what our JavaScript does is this. a function and there's a lot of ways that we can do this all right there's some icons that it creates an array of there's a couple configuration issues um, or, 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 or parameters rather C for Celsius F for Fahrenheit, for Fahrenheit so I could change that to do Fahrenheit if I wanted to let's go and do that So now if we run this one, we will get, again, the temperature in, in Fahrenheit, something that we can understand. All right. Let's go back to this. These particular things are jQuery commands. But what that says, essentially, is find the thing on the page called weather. That would be, if we were writing this by hand, it would be get element by ID, document dot get element by ID weather. Likewise scroller, likewise location. We then look to see if geolocation is um, enabled or not. All right. And we saw this example, we, we, we saw this kind of code last time, right? Either it's available or it's not. If we're on IE, Eight and earlier, it's not available. If we're on a certain version of Firefox, it is available. All right. We're calling then that geolocation object that's built into the browser, and we're telling it if this works, display location, call the function called location success. If does not, if this does not work, call the function called location error. All right. Well, here's the function. All right. If it succeeds, so if it finds a location, we can grab the latitude and longitude, and we can set up a call to Yahoo's API. All right. That's what this is. We're calling Yahoo's command, and we're following their procedure by passing in the latitude, the longitude, and other pieces of information. We then form this statement and we place a request to that Yahoo service asking for the weather information. Based on the weather information then, we go in and we 
pull out the city, we pull out some other weather information, and we actually go in and write that information on the page. This is actually a more complex example than I recall. All right, but there's a couple things that I want to note about this. First of all, this is an example of a page that uses Ajax, te Ajax techniques. That is, notice that once we say that we want the weather, the page doesn't completely reload. Instead, we make a call to the server, and we get back our data, and then we display that data. Let me see if I can find a simpler case of a weather example. I know that uh, that other example you had posted on the, the Sunday listing uh, showed like a six-day mm -hmm. forecast. Yeah, let's see if I can find. Posted Angel? Uh, I was on that very page. That was the one, okay. Yeah. Right. Um, let's see. Let's look for. That's right. I will just leave it at that. Um, again, that's an example, and you could, you could easily adapt that to do um, what, what you want to do as far as weather goes. What I'd like to do now is talk a little bit about another kind of geolocation. And maybe it will explain why we can know more precisely where Someone is, if they're on a mobile device, then on a desktop. And in addition, we'll talk about doing this in PHP using IP addresses, how that will give us information. But again, 
not to as fine a degree as detail. All right, we have our client machine. We are connected to the internet. All right, and we go to a web server, let's say, and request a page. What happened in that example we were looking at a minute ago was this. Downloaded to my client machine was some code that used the browser's geolocation. That's now part of the specification for HTML5. Versions of Firefox beyond a certain version have it. IE9 has it. Google Chrome has it, and so on. Now, that code to display the weather, let's say, The first thing it's going to do is it's going to ask, where are you? All right. That's the browser's geolocation. If it can't, if the browser doesn't have geolocation enabled, it's not able to ask that. And you get that error message saying geolocation not supported. So the first thing the browser does is it asks, where are you? The browser, since that could be construed as a privacy issue, asks you, do you want to share location? Let's say I say yes. The browser then will return to the script the location in terms of latitude and longitude. Now, how does the client machine do that? Well, it depends. It depends on what the client machine is and what web browser it's using. If I do it from a mobile device, this client machine's a mobile device, it has a GPS unit in it, right? So the GPS unit can allow the client machine, the client browser, to give a very good answer as to where I'm located. All right? So if I pull up my mobile device and, and go to one of these pages, it can place me precisely at Lorain County Community College. All right? So in the case of a mobile device, it'll give me precise because it's using GPS. It's scary when you look at GPS as how accurately they know where you are, you know, if you've ever used one like for driving or whatever. If you're not on a mobile, and we'll say we're on a desktop, your desktop doesn't have a GPS. But your desktop is connected to the internet through an internet service provider. All right. Everyone that's connected to the internet is connected through an internet service provider. And then there's all kinds of other stuff that happens from the time you make a request to the time the server responds to it. But your first connection to the internet is to, through your internet service provider. And then your internet service provider is hooked to everything else. So if you're on a desktop machine, there's no GPS. So it will effectively ask the ISP, where are you? And based on the fact that we're connected to an ISP here in Elyria, that's our service provider, is defined as being in Elyria, it knows we're in Elyria. But it doesn't know, for example, that I'm here at Lorraine Community College, I could be anywhere in Elyria because I could be going through that same internet service provider. So this is why, in a nutshell, we get a finer degree of detail when we go through a mobile device as compared to a desktop device. Because a mobile device has the ability to give a very exact location. 
whereas the desktop device kind of has the ISP, kind of has to ask the ISP, hey, where am I at? All right? And it's going to get a very imprecise answer because the ISP knows like where these things are coming from. It knows where it's located and knows its customers are from that area, but can't tell me that I'm at Lorraine Community College. All right? So, all right, that's why the mobile can get very precise, the desktop can give less precise. Now, this kind of geolocation using the client side code has some advantages and has disadvantages. What are some of the advantages to this kind of geolocation? What are some good things about it? What are some bad things about it? From the perspective of a developer. What was the question again? I'll tell you what, I'm not, I'm gonna, I would draw the question as a, as a lawyer would say. Let me go over the other kind of geolocation that we could do, then we'll come back and we'll compare them. I was asking you what the advantages and disadvantages of this was. Until we talk about what the alternative is, it really doesn't make sense to talk about what the advantages and disadvantages are, right? So we'll talk about the alternative first. So this is method A. Client side. geolocation. And it will be done via JavaScript and maybe make some AJAX server calls. The other side of the coin is server-side geolocation. What is server-side geolocation? Well, on the server, we can effectively, we are going to get an IP address. IP stands for Internet Protocol. All right. The IP address is like really the, the, the definitive address of a particular machine on the Internet. And everyone has an IP address. Every machine has an IP, every, every connection to the internet has an IP address associated with it. All right? And it has to come with the request so the server knows where to send a response to. Right? So in other words, if we're both sitting at computers side by side, you're on your laptop, I'm on mine, and I type in google.com and you type in google.com and I type in PHP as my search and you type in jQuery mobile as your search we both hit enter you're going to get your results I'm going to get my results I'm not going to get someone else's search results all right it's not like the mail where it can deliver the mail to the wrong house right you're not going to get someone else's search results why well because when you make the request what comes, one thing that comes to the server is the IP address of who made the request. So, again, this gets a little more complicated when you talk about like having wireless networks and routers, but for our purposes, we can consider each connection of the internet as having its own IP address, more or less. All right? Now, so we both type in a Google search. The IP address is what makes sure that yours goes back to your machine, mine goes back to mine. All right, so the results. So, how does the server know then? How can the server know geolocation? Well, the server sort of can look up and see where your IP address is associated with. 